So I thought, what if memory is information traveling through time? And then I thought, that explains why Paul Meyer's system was so powerful, because it's all about deciding on your goal. And what's a goal? Welcome. You've landed on Zero Limits Living. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. Every week I bring you inspiration and information to transform your life. This show is now so popular you can see it or hear it on 1,000 platforms across the galaxy. And that includes Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, YouTube, and probably anything you could name. I'm putting all the episodes in one place to make it easy for you. Just go to ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com, ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com. Also, I want to remind you, you can have a free session to understand what Miracles Coaching is all about. Coaching is trendy. It's a buzzword right now. But I started my own coaching program 20 years ago, trademarked it about 15 years ago. It has stood the test of time. It is a system that works. But find out for yourself, free, no charge, no obligation. Go to miraclescoaching.com. Also, if you've been watching or listening to the show, you know I'm an author. I've written 80-some books. My latest book is Unexpected Kindness. And if you go to unexpectedkindnessbook.com, you can learn all about it. But it's on Amazon, hardcover, paperback, and Kindle right now. And then the next thing, and it's going to lead into today's very stimulating, mind-bending conversation, is about time travel, mental time travel. And again, if you've been watching or listening to the show, you know I came out with a program last year called Mental Time Travel System. It's at mentaltimetravelsystem.com. And it's a way to go to the past to rewrite it, to reinterpret it. And when you free the stuck energy from the past with this mental time travel system, you increase your energy in the moment. And then in the moment, you can look forward to create the future you desire, you long for, you fantasize about, and you deserve. Well, when I came out with the mental time travel system, I started hearing from people applauding it, raving about it, telling everybody about it, wanting me to know how much they loved it. And one person who wrote me said, I love your program, and I've been doing something like it for decades. And in fact, he said he wrote a book about it. Well, I thought, oh, my God, I didn't even know this. With all the research I did, I didn't come across his book. Well, I now have the book, and I now have the author, and he's my guest today. Let me introduce who he is. Anthony Hamilton is the author of Mind, Time, and Power, which is the book I now have in my hand. Heal Your Past, Transform Your Present, Create Your Future, Mind, Time, and Power. In it, he describes the results of his 30 years of research into how our thoughts and feelings shape our lives. His work began after an out-of-body experience at the age of 10. He saw himself at the age of 32, and he spent the next 20 years searching for an answer to the question, how is it possible to receive information from the future? He eventually realized that we receive information from the future constantly, but most of us are simply unaware of it. Science proved this idea was true in 1995. Harvard scientists discovered that our memory works in the future, too. It gives us information via what they now call mental time travel. Anthony specializes in coaching and training people to reach higher levels of personal leadership, personal effectiveness, success, and results creation. He lives in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, and his website is mindtimeandpower.com, mindtimeandpower.com. Here's his book, and here's Anthony. How are you, Anthony? I'm great, Joe. Thanks very much for having me on the show. I'm looking forward to this. Did you create this? Were you in the past and focused on the future and somehow made a 
mental time travel experience where we now are in this moment together? Well, looking back on this from the future, we may conclude that. <laughs> looking back on this from the future, I'm already got my mind warped. Listen, you are a fascinating guy, and I, I want to acknowledge your book. I First of all, I apologize. I am a research freak. I'm a dog hound when it comes to researching books, and I did not know of your book when I was looking through all the time tra travel material, probably because time travel is not in the title and time machine's not in the title, so it didn't come up. But I'm grateful to know of your book because it's genius. I've already read this twice, and I think it's the kind of book that you have to reread two or three times, and you need to have a highlighter, and you need to have a pen to make notes in the margins. The book is outstanding, and I mean that sincerely. So congratulations on writing the book. Well, thank you very much for that glowing recommendation, Joe. I think it's a great book, too, even though it's mine. Right. And it, it's really the product of my pretty well my entire life. You know, wow. uh, when I when I had that dream, I was 10 and it was just a sunny day. You know, I'd finished playing baseball with some friends and I was walking through a field near my home where I lived in Nova Scotia. And some of my older friends, you know, I have two older brothers. So them are there. Some of their friends who were a little older than me, they had built a treehouse in the top of this tree. So I decided to climb this tree and laid down on the roof of this tree house. And I did one of my favorite things, which was to look up at the sky and watch the clouds going by. You know, oh, look, there's a, there's a steed with a knight on it, you know, and there's a galleon going by, right? <clears throat> and um, the next thing I knew, I fell asleep. And literally the next thought I had or the next impression I had was that I was out of my body looking down at myself at what seemed to be the age of 32, just kind of a knowingness. Mm -hmm. And so I knew at that point, I knew, right, that I was going to be writing, I was going to be speaking, I was going to be teaching, I was going to be helping people live happier and more successful lives. I also knew I was going to be, um, <clears throat> pardon me, I also knew I was going to be married to an Asian woman. And I knew I was going to be a university professor. So immediately after that dream, I was so excited. I mean, it was like, you know, in the East, they say an epiphany is like a flash of lightning on a dark night. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it was. You know, it was just a boom, you know, and I had all this information in my, in my mind. So to me, coming from a very religious family, I thought, you know, maybe this is a, a message from God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I went running home, running into the house and told my mother, I'm going to be a university professor. I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to be famous. <laughs> and um, she laughed. She said, you are so silly. Mm. And I was crushed. You know, I just, mm -hmm. I just thought, I can't tell this dream to my most cherished friend, i.e. my mother, you know. And so I thought, I'm never going to tell anybody about this dream again. Hmm. And I didn't tell anybody about it for around 50 years. Wow. But I, yeah, but I kept, <clears throat> I kept trying to figure out how on earth could this happen? Because to me, it seemed like it was, it was real, you mm -hmm. know? So immediately after that, so we're talking my early teens, uh, I started reading books on science fiction, you know, um, HG Wells, reading books about time travel, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court. Right, Mark Twain. One, one of my favorite movies is uh, Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, oh, which, right. is, which is, I think, the best, <clears throat> you know, the best time travel movie that there is. At any rate, um, I didn't make much progress on, on figuring out this dream. I just became more and more confused. And because my, my dad was in the service, we moved a lot. I changed schools every year. And I got used to being the new kid. 
you know. Well, I was a very good student. I was a top student. I got great marks. And then in my last year of high school, we moved again. We moved from Nova Scotia to Quebec and then finally to Ontario. And so here I was last year of high school and I just got so fed up being the new kid, you know, and struggling to get good marks. <clears throat> and my marks from the year before were, were a little bit low. And so in the last year of high school, what happened was the teacher ranked all us kids in the class according to our marks, you know. And so the smart kids who were obviously going to go to university, which was where I thought I was destined to go to, um, he put them in the front of the class. But with me, because my marks were a little low from the previous year, he put me in the back of the class with all the other losers, right? And so I just kind of lost my self-image. I mean, I had been used to being considered the bright kid, <clears throat> star pupil, mm -hmm. teacher's pet, you know. And so as a consequence, I just gave up on school. And so for the next 10 years, I just got bummed out, depressed, lost. I had no education. I thought I, I can never go to university. I can never become a professor. I can never be a writer, you know? So this dream that I had always considered to be my destiny, it now just seemed like it had been stolen from me, right? Mm -hmm. And so for the next 10 years or so, I just spiraled down. Uh, pretty soon, I was like 60 pounds overweight. I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, uh -huh. drinking beer with my friends all the time, you know, yeah. and just going nowhere. My health was down. My relationships were a mess. I couldn't get a decent job because I didn't have any education, right? And But somehow, I think in a strange way, because of that dream, I saw myself at the age of 32. So by the time I got to be like 27, 28, 29, you know, I thought I got to do something here because this dream was still kind of haunting me, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I started, I mean, I had been studying all along metaphysics, psychic phenomena, you know, um, prophets from the Bible mm -hmm. and the power of the mind and physics. Einstein said, you know, the laws of time and the laws of space are mirrors of each other. So I enrolled in a course called Silva Mind Control, mm -hmm. and which you've heard about. Oh, and yes. for, the first, for the first time, I started to learn about my inner senses, you know, closing your eyes, con constructing an inner laboratory, you know, revisiting your past. And the other thing that I did was I took a course from a company called Success Motivation Institute. I know them well. <laughs> they were absolutely. In, they a were in Waco, name. Texas. Yes. Absolutely. Paul J. Meyer. That's right. That's right. And so I enrolled in one of their courses. Now, the course that I enrolled in took my last EI check because I got fired from my job. And I remember the course, this was in 1979, the course was $750, yeah. which would have been about $3,500 today. Mm -hmm. I took my entire EI check and I enrolled in that course. And in that course, I learned about goal setting. Because Paul J. Meyer, as you know, he was big on goals. Mm -hmm. And so he had this goal setting system, which was the best, and it still is the best, system for planning your life and setting your goals that I've ever seen. So I started, around that time, I started doing workshops on how to set goals, how to motivate yourself, all from Paul J. Meyer. And Silver Mind Control, I was doing visualization exercises. So I started doing these workshops on how to, how to live a better life. And so in one of those workshops, I was invited to go to Portland, Oregon, and do some training down there. And so I remember clearly, I was standing in front of the room and I'm teaching this class, and I have everybody closing their eyes and visualizing something. And I thought to myself, my God, this, this dream is starting to come true. Here I am teaching, speaking writing, helping people live better lives. 
by using the power of their mind. So in, you know, because I was doing the silver mind control, I was doing a 20 minute visualization every single day. Mm -hmm. And I realized at some point that I couldn't remember anything positive about my childhood. Oh. Right. I mean, I just couldn't remember anything. I thought, well, this is strange. I mean, every kid, you know, every time you see a kid, they're playing and laughing and running and, you know, just having a heck of a time. So how is it that I can't remember anything positive about my childhood? You know, I just blanked on it because I had thought I was rejected by my parents, rejected by the church, rejected by the school system. And so my life from the time I was like in my late teens until then, was just down in the dumps until I started learning about visualizing and goal setting. Hmm. So one day I'm visualizing, I'm going back, and I thought, well, I'll go back in my mind and see if I can't remember something positive. And I remember it took me three or four days, but eventually I thought, ah, baseball. I remember I used to love playing baseball. So the next day I went back to the baseball game in my mind. And I said to myself, well, who else was I playing with? You know, who else was there? And, you know, what were we doing? So I did this. And I remember, as I remember, it took about two months. I went back to that baseball game every day. And I got to the point eventually where I could remember my friends' names. I remember their dogs' names, their cats' names. I remembered some of their phone numbers, their addresses. I remembered their, you know, what their parents did for a living some of the cars that they used to drive, right? It was like taking a rag and wiping off the dust and mm. the dirt from some giant painting. Every time I did that visualization, I remembered more and more. And eventually I realized, you know, I had a fantastic childhood. <laughs> I had fantastic parents, you know? I mean, I had lots of things. And so one day I remembered after this baseball game, I was in this field. I climbed up into this tree and I laid down on the roof of this treehouse and I fell asleep. And I saw myself in the future, teaching and writing and helping people live better lives. And I remember I snapped out of that visualization exercise and you talk about a whack on the side of the head. I thought to myself, my God, I just had the same dream, right. but I had it from the other end. <laughs> and that to me was the key. Because I had, I realized, you know, Einstein says the laws of time and, and the laws of space are the same. So what do I know about space? Well, one thing I knew, information travels through it. You know, you can talk to somebody, you can yell, you can send a signal, semaphore, radio, television, you know, all of that is information traveling through space. So I thought, what if memory is information traveling through time. And then I thought, that explains why Paul Meyer's system was so powerful, because it's all about deciding on your goals. And what's a goal? It's in the future. So memory is a connection, and goal setting is a connection. Mm. So that was it. That was it in a nutshell. I realized, you know, thinking is time traveling. When you set a goal, there's a part of you in the future that connects with you and you can talk to, you know, you can dialogue with your future self and he will show you or she will show you how to get there. Just the same as if you're planning a trip across the country, right? When you remember your past self, you go back in your mind, you communicate with your past self, you know that person, how they felt, what they were doing, you know. And so I realized thinking is time travel. And so I started teaching that. I started to write a book about it. And eventually I found out that I was able to go to university. A friend of mine one day said, well, you can go to university anytime. You're a mature student now. I was nearly 40. <laughs> and I was saying, you know, I, I had this vision about this, this future life, you know, but I can't go to university. And I was bogged down writing this book. Hmm. So she said to me, well, you can go to university now. You're, you know, you're a mature student. So I enrolled in university, studied philosophy, studied linguistics, studied Asian studies, 
was going to do a master's. I thought, here I am back on track. I'll do a master's degree, do a PhD, university professor, ta-da, you know. Didn't happen that way. I was involved in a pretty serious car accident. Oh. I had to had to give up my traveling public speaking seminar business for a while because it was just too much work. Hmm. So I started teaching English, and which I loved, you know, being a linguist. Uh, I loved teaching English. So I started working for this college in Vancouver where I was living. And one day the college uh, shut down. So I was offered another job with another college teaching in China. Well, oh. I'd never I'd never been to China, you know, I had no idea about China. Didn't want to go to China actually, you know. <laughs> right. But I but I went, right? And so after I was in China for about 2 weeks, very cold part of China in the north up near Russia. Um, I slipped on some ice, really hurt my back. So I met this physiotherapist. She started working on my back, fixed my back, fixed all the trauma in my neck and my shoulders from my traffic accident from 10 years ago. I had been having all this chronic pain. <clears throat> and um, we ended up getting married. Uh -huh. And after we got married, I thought, gee, there's another part of that dream. You know, I'd been used to the dream yeah. coming true in little bits yeah. and pieces for years, right? Well, one day, about a year after that, the president of our college in Vancouver called a special faculty meeting in China and said, I've got some good news. We just received our charter from the province of British Columbia. Capilano College is now Capilano University. All of you teachers are officially university professors. And you gave me a new box of business cards, Anthony Hamilton, <laughs> professor of English communication. I nearly fell out of my chair. Wow. So when I got back to Canada, because the, the uh, program in China, after four years, it was over. So we came back to Canada, my wife and I, and our son, her son, and, uh, I thought, well, I'll get back on the bike and do the same thing I was doing before. You know, I published my book, Mind, Time, and Power, which I had finished and published in around 1999. Mm -hmm. well, this was 2010. So I thought, well, I'll just publish the book again, and I'll start doing some workshops and things like I, like I was doing before. And started doing some research, and it was only then that I realized, hey, in 1995, scientists at Harvard discovered two things, mental time travel and neuroplasticity. Yeah. Well, I've been teaching neuro, neuroplasticity for 20 years at this point, 30 years really, because in 1980, when I put together my theory of mental time travel, you know, uh, I talked about the fact that when you visualize and you set goals, your brain will change. Because I had learned this from Wallace D. Wattles, right? right. And you're familiar with Wallace Wattles. Very well, so, yes. So the idea that you can change your brain by thinking, that was something I'd been teaching about, but it was no scientist was talking about it mm. until 1995. And I've been talking about mental time travel since 1980. And suddenly, like I say, in 2010, I realized, hey, mental time travel is a thing now. It's a scientific fact. Mm. So all of a sudden it was like, whoa, here's that dream come true again. Yes. Well, let me stop you for a moment. You are a fascinating man with a fascinating story. And there's so many questions that come to mind. First of all, I've been fascinated with time travel since the 1960 movie, The Time Machine, which caused me to get my own little miniature model of the time machine at one point. Right. And I would mentally imagine sitting in this thing and then going back in time or going in the future in time. And of course, as you know, it led to my whole program the mental time travel system the question i have for you to begin with is <clears throat> does the future already exist in real time and let me finish for a second because when you're 10 years old and you have you call it a dream but there was some sort of premonition experience that was a little bit more rich than what i would think of as a dream and that was so detailed, it's almost like an existing future informed your 10-year-old self. 
And that 10-year-old self then, through time, ended up meeting the future. Does the future already exist? Absolutely. Do we have a variety of future timelines? Because the 10-year-old saw the different elements. And over time, did they come true because of that dream slash premonition? Or did they come true because the future existed and you were destined to go there anyway? Well, here we are after, you know, I just turned 75. So 65 years of thinking about this. Yes. And this is what I've figured out. Both the past and the future exist right now. Mm. And we can visit them in our mind. Mm -hmm. So mental time travel is using your imagination. Your imagination is a connection. So the imagination is like a phone call. Like you and I are having this conversation right now. You know, you're in Texas and I'm in British Columbia, but the information is going back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Einstein said, the laws of time and the laws of space are mirror images of each other. So I live in Victoria, BC. Now, Toronto, where I used to live, it's still there. It hasn't gone anywhere, right? Texas, from what I understand, it exists too, right? Now, if I want to go to Texas and visit my friend Joe Vitale, mm -hmm. I can go there, right? I can drive there. Now, there's a thousand different ways I could drive there because there's a thousand different possible routes, right? Mm -hmm. so, the so the future exists, in my opinion, as a possibility. The same as me driving right now to Texas exists as a possibility, right? Now, when I had that dream, here's the, here's the way I understand it now. You see, I used to be a university professor. I used to be a seminar leader. I used to be 10 years old living in Nova Scotia. All of those times, they exist right now in my mind. Mm -hmm. So they are in my memory. So we call that a memory, right? So those places in time, 10 years old, 32 years old, 65 years old, they all exist in my mind now and I can visit them all. That's just called using your memory, right? Mm -hmm. But I believe that just like um, Carl Jung, says we have many future selves many possible futures right and so when you are attracted to something joseph campbell said it best you know follow your bliss mm -hmm. so what is it that attracts you if there's something that you see or hear and you go hey you know what is that that that's interesting right Carl Jung says, maybe that's a future you trying to manifest through you. Mm. So that's how I believe it. So basically what I'm saying is, because I had spent 20 years thinking about that dream, and when I started to visualize and started to become really familiar with my inner senses, and, became, and as I say, if you remember, I spent two months visualizing my 10th year. And then eventually I got to connect with that 10 year old who had climbed that tree and had that dream. So that 10 year old and that 32 year old, they were connected. Now from 32, hey, no problem. It's a dream or it's a memory of me being 10. But thinking is a connection. Mm -hmm. I had spent two months building that connection by doing my memory exercises and visualization exercises. I believe that's why the 10 year old picked up on it because that connection between the 10 year old and the 32 year old was a strong connection. Apparently because there was a very powerful dream that stuck with you for decades. And certainly you must've had other dreams as a 10 year old, nine year old, eight year old or 12 year old and so forth. Let me interrupt because what I'm trying to do here is not only pull out the best of you and people are going to have to go get your book to understand everything because this is pretty deep stuff. I want to make this as practical for everybody watching or listening. 
Right now, Lisa and I are toying with where are we going to move? We would like to move someplace cooler than Texas. I've been here a very long time. Cooler climate would be nice. So as we play with possibilities, this, in my mind, is like playing with future selves. There's a future Joe who's living in Lake Como, Italy. I spent 30 days there, and I fell in love with Lake Como, Italy. But there's another future Joe who would like to go to Boulder, Colorado, and he's a little uncertain about the altitude and everything, but he's thinking about that. There's another Joe who is considering going to Lisbon, Portugal, for a variety of reasons. When somebody has these multiple potential futures, how do you know which one they all have juice to them? They all have passion to them. They all have desires to them. So if somebody's sitting, listening to you right now or watching you right now, and they're going, well, I, I lost my job. I'm thinking about going in this direction. I'm thinking about doing this job. I'm thinking about doing this particular thing. How does the future part of them inform the present part of them to make a decision they're going to be happy with? It's very simple. Oh. When you, when <laughs> I was you're expecting planning, it was going to be hard. All right. No, no, it's dead simple. I mean, this is something we do all the time. Now, remember, I said thinking, every thought. Mm -hmm. is an instance of time travel every thought so you now are planning okay where am i going to live boulder colorado you know lake como or mm -hmm. i forget Lisbon. the other place you mentioned mm -hmm. and oh yeah portugal yeah um now you can visit all those places and you can spend if you choose you could spend four months in each one of those places every year so literally, you could have homes in three of those places if you wanted to. So when somebody is planning their summer vacation, what they do is they wrestle with the same question that you're wrestling with, which is, gee, should I go here? Should I go there? You know, what's this going to cost? How much are the tickets? You know, are they available? It's exactly the same process because, as Einstein said, laws of time and laws of space are the same. So when you think about or when anybody thinks about going to the store to buy a loaf of bread that's mental time travel you know they say oh yeah we, we're out of bread i gotta go to the store you know i'll stop on the store on the way home and i'll buy some bread now if the person happens to be visual they're going to see a little movie in their mind of them stopping at the store on the way home and getting the bread right so that's what they call oh that's setting a setting a goal. I'm going to buy some bread on the way home. So they drive home. You know, they stop on the store and they and they and they buy the loaf of bread. Now, when they're in the store buying the loaf of bread, they can remember being home, deciding to buy the loaf of bread in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. So they are connected to that past self that decided to buy the bread, and we're always connected. Mm -hmm. So, to my mind. <laughs> all of our all of our possible selves, they're possible. Which one has the most appeal? Well, somebody I I went to see the Dalai Lama one time, and somebody said to him, "How do I know if I should study Buddhism?" Dalai Lama said, "Well, if when you hear the word Buddha or Buddhism, something stirs inside you, then follow it up." But if you hear the word Buddha or Buddhism, you know, and nothing happens, then don't worry about it. So I think it's exactly the same. So when we set goals, and I'll say it again, this system of Paul J. Myers, which I've been teaching now for going on 40 years. Wow. The more you get into his workbook process and writing down your goals and and ranking your goals, you know, which which goals are the most important, which goals look like they'd be the most fun, you know, um, then you'll get to the place where you can make a choice. You can say, well, this, you know, same as, same as planning a summer vacation. It looks like this place would be the most fun and the most practical and the most reasonable. So I'll go there. So once you make a choice, then of course your mind starts to, you know, give you more and more ideas. Mm -hmm. The, reticular activating system you know about it starts to feed you information oh there's a sale on you know tickets to this place mm -hmm. so you end up going there now you could have gone to the other place but you made a decision 
So I think it's exactly the same thing in time. You know, people have to decide. And you've said it many times, people can't decide. Well, how do they decide then? That is a common question that comes up, and I'd love to know your answer. When somebody says, I don't know what I want, or I don't know what my goals are, I'd love to know what I want, I'd love to know my goals, and they act like they're confused, or they're in a fog, or they got too many choices, and they can't make one, what's your advice? How do you, you do coaching and consulting, how do you help these people? Well, like I say, I have a workbook process that I learned from Paul Meyer that I teach people, right? And mm -hmm. basically, it just involves thinking about it. There's that word, thinking. You know, you have mm -hmm. to think about it, right? So, you know, basically, you list, okay, you start off with your dreams. What are my dreams? Go to Lake Como, go to Boulder, right? <clears throat> then you ask yourself, okay, what are the benefits? What would the benefits be to me if I did this? What would the benefits be if I did that? And you list the benefits, right? What's it going to cost me? What am I going to lose if I go there? What am I going to lose if I do that? You know, and just by going through this process, you will eventually find that, you know, one of them sort of stands out and that's what you decide to do. Now, of course, you can make a mistake, right? I mean, you can go to Lake Como and live there for six months and realize, you know, Lake Como is not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna move back, you know. Right. So, it's, so you know, it's, it's possible to make a mistake, right? So again, I'm gonna say it. Mental time travel is thinking. So all of the intricacies that are involved with thinking and motivating yourself and asking yourself what are the benefits and why should I do this and you know all of those things involve your mind moving back and forth in time mm -hmm. and and you having a conversation with this future self with that future self and well, look, eventually you know motivation to my mind motivation has two pillars to it mm -hmm. one is desire which one do you desire the most and the other one is belief mm -hmm. which one do you believe the most well a lot of people have dreams but they say, well, I don't think I can do that. I'm not the person that could do that. You know, I don't see myself as somebody who can do that. So what are they doing? They're saying that their self-image doesn't support them achieving that goal. So what do we do? Well, we take a course from Anthony Hamilton, or we do some coaching with Joe Vitale, and we find out about clearing out our limiting thoughts about our self-image, our self-esteem, our personal so Let's power. take that. Let's take that because, Anthony, you're very helpful here, and there's so much we can pull from you, and we're not going to have time to get it all. So I want to go for the gusto here. So we got somebody excited and they're thinking about what they can do in their life. And whether it's going on a trip or whether it's getting a new job or opening their business, they're, they're locking in on a desire and they're getting a little excited. But now the self-doubt comes in, the very thing you were just talking about. Their self-image doesn't match their self-desire. Their self-desire is, I want to play big. I want to open my business. I got a cookie recipe, and I want to do a cookie restaurant or whatever it happens to be. But suddenly they're going, I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough education. I don't have enough money. Nothing works out for me. I can't see myself doing it. Give us something they could use. Give us something to chip away at that right now. Ask yourself a question. Can I imagine somebody else doing this? Mm. Get yourself out of the way, right? Mm -hmm. Can I imagine somebody, can I imagine Joe Vitale doing this? Can I imagine my cousin doing this? Whatever, you know, can I imagine somebody else doing this? And chances are pretty good they'll say, yeah, I can. I can imagine somebody else doing it. Okay, well, what's the difference between that person and you? Mm. Well, they have more confidence. Okay, can you build your confidence? Yeah, how? Read a book. Take a course, learn to meditate, you know. So that's, to me, that's the short answer. Yeah. Number one, do you believe somebody could do it? And if the answer is yes, then okay. Why can't you do it? And what can you do to change yourself? Or what can you learn? What course can you take? Mm -hmm. What coach can you hire? What person can you talk to? What book can you read that will help you become one of those people that can do that? That's a great answer. And that's one of the reasons I encourage people to read books, 
because it shows that other pe people have done things that you might have thought were impossible, and you subconsciously conclude, well, if they could do it, then I can do it, especially when you hear here, like in my case, I was homeless, I was in poverty, and they go, well, if he was homeless and he was in poverty, and now he's doing his own show here, then maybe there's hope for me. And that's what people could conclude. Um, give me an example of somebody you've worked with. Since you've been working with people, helping them achieve their peak performance and get past their limits, and you've been doing it a very long time. Uh, do you have a favorite story? Do you have somebody that you like to talk about? that has had some sort of breakthrough as a result of your book, for example, Mind, Time, and Power, or working with you directly? Well, there's so many people, you know, it's hard to pick one, but um, I have a friend, his name is Greg, right? <clears throat> he's, uh, he's involved. I do a weekly live Q&A call over Zoom, and Greg has been coming to these calls now for almost a year, I think. He's, he's a very, very, very successful businessman, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that Paul Meyer teaches, and this is, of course, what I teach now, too, you know, look at your life in six different areas. You have a mental, physical, spiritual, financial, family, and social side, right? So we set goals, and we have dreams, and we have, you know, ideas about all those different things, right? So Greg said about a month ago, uh, you know, um, I've been thinking about my family side, and my relationships with my family siblings could be better so i decided you know i live in uh, you know he lives in southern california and his family <clears throat> members live in florida so he said i decided to go and visit them in florida right so he did he said he had a fantastic time he came back so i said well how do you feel now he said oh i feel better i said so your life is better and your relationships with your siblings are better because you decided to go and spend some time and energy visiting them in Florida. He said, yeah. So I thought that's perfect. You know, that's a perfect example of somebody saying, you know, it, when I look at my life now, this guy's a very successful salesperson and financier and a business person, but his family relationships were lacking, you know, wow. on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel about those? Well, they're kind of low level. So now he's brought them up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, another another person I know is, uh, her name's Kathy. And she told a similar story, you know, that she's been going through some rough times. And she said, you know, I woke up in the morning and my first thought was, another lonely weekend right i hate this so she just said hold it you know stop that thinking i'm going to do something i have the power anthony says the my my power exists in the present now is my point of power right so i'm going to decide to improve my life today what can i do well first thing she she thought was i can clean my house now, how mundane is that, right? But her mindset was, okay, I can make a difference here. I can clean my house. I've been putting it off, you know, for the last X number of weeks, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to clean the house. Went out, stocked her shelves, bought some groceries, you know, got her car cleaned. All of a sudden, it's like, hey, I proved to myself that I can make a decision and improve my life. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it starts. That's where it starts is, is realizing, okay, I can make a choice right now to improve something in my life and I can do it. What about when there's something big on the outer? And I'm thinking of the pandemic, which pretty much leveled the playing field for the entire planet and caused a whole lot of people to, to have to do things that they're still not recovered from whether that was COVID or whether that was the great resignation, quitting their jobs or losing their jobs. When there's something giant like that, that is looking like it's on the outer coming into your house, you and I teach a whole lot about the inner world. How do you do the mental time travel or anything in your book, Mind, Time and Power to handle the outside, the outer world coming in? Yeah, it's 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 tricky, you know. Uh, when when the when the outer world changes, 
in a big way, like we've just experienced, mm -hmm. um, we have to adjust, right? And so this, I think, is, is when we need to have our, our faith, our beliefs, using affirmations. I see myself getting through this. Literally, I see myself, right? Have mm -hmm. a little mental movie. I see myself getting through this. Look around, talk to your friends, read a book, you know, watch a movie, watch your Joe Vitale videos mm -hmm. and take a step, take a baby step. You know, uh, one of the things that I did <clears throat> when I, um, when I first got into the, you know, the mind power and uh, Silva mind control and the goal setting, I decided I want to quit smoking. Mm. And so I tried to quit, quit for a month, started again, quit for a week, started again. I thought to myself, if I can quit for six months, I'll have it beat, you know? I quit for six months. Next thing I knew, I was smoking again, right? <laughs> so I thought, this is no good. I got I to gotta figure this out. So I kind of went inside, you know, and I thought, how much do I believe that I can quit? smoking mm. for a year the answer was zero oh. okay well how much do i believe i can quit for six months zero how much do i believe i can quit for a month well i quit for a month before so maybe three four five you know how much do i believe i can quit for a day oh yeah seven or eight nine you know so i said to myself and this to me was a key question how small does my goal have to be so that I absolutely believe 100% that I can do it? Oh, yeah. that's good. And the answer, oh. came, it is good. <laughs> and the answer came back to me one minute. So I thought, well, wait a second, you know, who wants to quit smoking for a minute? I mean, I want to quit smoking forever, right? But I couldn't imagine forever but I can imagine one minute. So my goal became to not smoke for one minute. And what I realized was that was the key because uh -huh. when I had a craving to smoke. All I had to do was go for one minute, you know? And I'll tell you in the beginning, Joe, some of those minutes were long minutes. I mean, I can remember <laughs> no, no exaggeration. I can remember looking at the clock on the wall, watching the second hand going around going, oh my God, you know, this wow. is taking a long time. <clears throat> but what happened was I learned that I could not smoke for one minute, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so from that situation, you know, several things happened. Number one, I realized Every, every time I don't smoke, when I feel like smoking, I get a little bit stronger. Mm. Number two, the craving gets a little weaker, right? Mm. My self-image starts to shift, right? Now, this is the same thing that Kathy did that I just mentioned, you know? She said, I'm going to prove to myself that I can improve my life today. I'm going to do something. I'm going to clean my house, right? Mm. So this idea of taking action, setting a small goal and yeah. taking a small step, even a baby step mm -hmm. in that direction, mm -hmm. that's where we have to start. Anthony, that's absolutely brilliant. That is genius. It reminds me, I had a, a vocal teacher when I was playing music and everything who said when you're playing the guitar and you're having some problems with the strumming or a chord, play it so slow that you cannot make a mistake. It goes back to bringing it way down to a manageable, believable, you can do it kind of a size, whether it's one minute or a particular chord. We're going to be running out of time. So let me ask you two or three questions here. One is, do you believe we have any limits? This show is called Zero Limits Living. It's an exploration of whether we have limits or not. Your book is full of all kind of, gosh, there's so much in it, mind, time, and power. Everybody has to go get that about meaning, about beliefs, about affirmations, about goal setting. It's loaded about time travel, philosophy, everything. Do we have any limits, Anthony? Well, the only thing that I could say is the only limits that we have are the limits that are self-imposed. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> that, you know, our limits... In a way, the idea of a limit, I think, is, is maybe not the right way to describe it. Mm 
you know, mm -hmm. like uh, if you think if you think of a person on a ship, you know, they look through the porthole, you know, and they can only see a very limited amount of ocean and sky, right? And the farther they get back, the smaller that that viewpoint is. So I think for all of us, you know, there are things that we that are the biggest that we can imagine and maybe the smallest that we can imagine, you know, like I can't imagine perhaps, you know, earning and earning the kind of income that certain people I can think of can earn. I mean, to me, it's, you know, in theory, I, I can tell myself, well, if he can do it, I can do it, you know, but I mean, in practical terms, there's a limit on the size, right? Or on, or on the amount. But, on, but at the same time, there's a limit on the bottom end too. If somebody said, hey, I got, I got a job for you here. It pays X number of dollars. I might say, I'm not going to work for that. <laughs> you know. So we have lower limits and upper limits. And I think what we can do in a practical sense is we can slowly expand those 10%, 20%, 30%. You know? mm -hmm. And one other thing, about this um, that I might mention is if you if you think about let's say in in terms of income right if you think of doubling your income well you can double your income without changing your personality all you have to do is work twice as many hours but nobody wants to do that you know right. but if you think of like 10xing your income what if I were making 10 times the amount of money well you can't do that and still be the same person. There, you know, there's not 10 mm -hmm. times the hours in a week, right? Mm -hmm. So the only way to achieve the big goal is to become <clears throat> a different person. Yeah. Maybe Change the future self. Maybe future the future self. version is making 10 times and can inform you how to do it now. What is yeah, your freebie? So, <clears throat> you, you mentioned you have a freebie. You have a free gift. You have a free. Yeah, something? that's right. Well, if people go to my to my website, mindtimeandpower.com, um, I have a free one month mind power course. Oh, and there's a workbook that goes with it. So they get the workbook and they can start setting goals and visualizing right away. And that puts them on my mailing list. So they'll get updates from me and they can communicate with me through uh, through the email. That is a great, so, great offer. Yeah. Let me ask you a final question, if you don't mind. And I already, I'm sorry that we don't have more time because there's so much more we can cover. And your book is so amazing. And I really encourage everybody, go get Mind, Time, and Power. It's on Amazon. That's where I got it. Here's the question. You're 75 years old. What would you go back in time and tell your 10-year-old self now? Well, what I would say is... Believe in your dream. Mm. Believe in yourself. See, what happened when I was in the last year of high school, I lost that dream. I mm. said to myself, it's, you know, it's not available anymore. And I think the other part of it, and maybe this is why I lost the dream. I lost myself. I lost my self-confidence. I lost my self-image. Mm. So I think that's what I would tell my past self. Keep on believing in your ability to dream and to be the person that you want to be. That is a great message for all of us. Anthony, I can't thank you enough. I love your book, Anthony Hamilton, Mind, Time, and Power. Go get it. Uh, it's been a great honor and pleasure and privilege to interview you. Thank you, for, thank you for saying yes. The pleasure is all mine, Joe. Thanks very much for inviting me on the show. You are welcome. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. You've been listening or watching Zero Limits Living. Every week, I bring you inspiration and information to transform your life. You can now see or hear this show on 1,000 platforms from Amazon to Apple to Roku to you name it. I'm putting all the episodes in one place, ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com. Also, go check out Miracles Coaching. Just go to MiraclesCoaching.com. Go check out my mental time travel system. It's at mentaltimetravelsystem.com. And my new book, Unexpected Kindness, it's on Amazon or go to unexpectedkindnessbook.com. I want to thank Lux Media Studios, Candace Barr for making the show possible, Nick, who's running the engineering for us. I want to thank my guest. I want to thank all of you and expect miracles. Thanks. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. 
It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASA. NASA increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.